suppressed in so many ways over the generation that it naturally has to manifest somehow and it just comes out in our bodies. We've never really gone back and dealt with the years of persecution of just showing up being black. We've never dealt with the degradation that people have put on us. Black is this, black is that, black is this, black is that. We've never gone back and really addressed those issues as a United States of America to rectify those things, to say that we're not this, that, this, that, and other. We've never done it. So even today in 2015, we're still kind of trying to prove that we can be other than this, that, that, and the other. That we to can be, be human. human. That we can, that we are human, and that. that what we're doing in this project. Maybe like a little introduction of how we came to this project and you know basically what Roby in the class with uh, Professor Price has done for us. In synthesizing my collaboration with Bernard Brown, it is my aim to situate the choreography of Dr. Zachary Price's course, Black Arts and Black Publics, in a discussion of Black Arts Los Angeles at the Roby, UCLA, and um, include our positionality as activists, academics, and performance that intermingles our talents together to awaken others and envision ways for revolutionary struggle and radical change. And how we were already on that path, path but this class just helped us to give us context to what we're doing. Exactly. Um, learning more about the legacy and the tradition of black arts as protests um, was significant in that having already been in the tradition and not knowing why I was doing it, I, I needed to get, I needed to gain more access to that, that information. Um, learning about Amiri Baraka, uh, the Black Arts West movement, and um, seeing that alongside the work I'd done with Lula Washington and the work that I'm doing here at UCLA as a social, uh, a social activist, a scholar, and an artist, um, being in this class, Black Arts and Black Publics, basically gave me access to syn synthesizing and putting all this work together and continuing to move forward. It was when we did our presentation together um, on Black Arts West that I realized that when we did movement in that class, mm -hmm. something opened up mm -hmm. for Professor Price's class. It was just like, not only you know were we reading and synthesizing, but we brought movement and the embodiment of it to the class, and I noticed how everyone's face lit up. And mm -hmm. so at that point, I already knew that my final project would be kind of leaving a mark for the class of a legacy that it could possibly continue to happen mm -hmm. because you know classes like this don't happen often no. and you know for me Bronzeville was another moment mm -hmm. that um, when the um, screenwriters um, Aaron and Tim came in um, and also reading it with um, the shifting grounds of race and then learning about you know 
the, the, how, you know, during Japanese internment, the Japanese were taken away and then the black um, folks coming from the south were taking over their spots. Just the whole play and just how it's historical. I was just like, this is wild. And in that same chapter, learning that um, we're learning about restricted covenants and finding that mm -hmm. Westwood, the Jazz in, uh, Investment Company, had Westwood only to re restrictive covenants where no blacks or anyone that was non-white could even live in Westwood and now this is where we are as UCLA students and we're feeling this racial climate that we're having and we're protesting racist stickers you know right outside the, 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 the jam steps. steps. <laughs> I just wanted to thank Professor Price for um, allowing us to have this experience and thank Roby Theater as well as all of the screenwriters and actors that came to talk to us. Yeah. I want to thank you for um, allowing us to interview you. Um, Welcome. Thank you. And so I have a short thank question you. that I want to ask you. Okay, so I wanted to tell you how I thought of Roby Theater in conversation with Paul Robeson's politics as an artist and an activist. So I wanted to ask you, how do you feel your work, in particular Bronzeville, falls in line of the legacy that Robeson um, unapologetically died and lived for? You have to understand where he starts from. Paul was an athlete, a attorney when the American Bar Association did not allow Negroes into the American Bar Association. He was introduced to the theater by his wife, Islanda Cardoza Good, who was uh, half Jewish. Ooh. And he was a linguist, a singer, vocalist, who sang in a couple of dozen languages. Uh, an actor, various artists, artistic disciplines he was very adept at. Uh, an activist, and finally, to answer your question, a humanitarian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what he evolved into, always was, but evolved into and articulated it through his travel, and the education he received, the practical education, as opposed to the academic education that he received through his work and traveling throughout the world mm -hmm. and learning the language of various people. He had a hand in composing the Chinese national anthem. They named a mountain after him in Russia. He was truly loved by the people because he truly spoke the language of the people. When you go to Spain and sing in Spanish, Italy and Italian, to the Congo and sing in one of the dialects that were personal to the Congo. Mm -hmm. So the people loved him because he truly spoke their language. Bronzeville, story about uh, choices and the consequences of choices the family that comes there and finds the young Asian man uh, hiding in the attic, refusing to go to the camps mm -hmm. because he deemed himself an American citizen. He was born there. And the family that came and the father, patriarchal figure who did not want him to stay in his house in the young man's house because that was his house. He wasn't just hiding in the attic, it was his home that yeah. he had been expelled from. Mm -hmm. The father had genuine concerns. Here you have a black family just out of Mississippi, a mm -hmm. couple of days, and here they are on the West Coast trying to figure it all out. Mm -hmm. And there is a real threat there because they are, for all mm -hmm. intents and purposes, harboring fugitives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who has committed a crime, the crime of being Japanese. And to protect the family, the father didn't want him, wanted to turn in all of that. Mm -hmm. 
And so what to do, what to do uh, does one, what kind of choice does one make? Well, Paul made choices. He made important, fundamental choices. He said it, and it's a quote, an artist must take a stand. He didn't, I didn't, I had no choice. I must take this stand of being true and a true artist.